Hello everyone, I'm Alex of Bennett Machine Support and I'm finally back with another video. Now in this video, I'm going to go over replacing a very common failed component in an AMS refrigerated vending machine. So this is going to be any sort of vending machine from AMS, the manufacturer, that has a refrigeration assembly or a cooling deck inside of it. And that part is going to be the refrigeration relay such as this. I'm going to show you where to locate this relay and how easy it is to very quickly replace these parts. So let's get started. Now the refrigeration relay inside your AMS machine that has a, some sort of refrigeration system is a very important part to the cooling system. Now over the years that I've been fixing bending equipment, I found that these components do fail quite often. So if you're operating multiple AMS machines, it's good to know to make sure you have a couple of these on hand as well as how to replace these and how to quickly troubleshoot if the problem you're having is related to your refrigeration relay. Now a quick theory of operation, I'm going to quickly go over how the cooling system works inside an AMS machine. So we have a control board and there are several components it uses to determine what the temperature is and how to turn the compressor on or off. Number one, we have a temperature probe. This is how the control board can read the temperature inside the machine. And then we have our set point. Now on an AMS, the set point factory is set at 40 degrees and the way the cooling system will work is it will turn the compressor on at 40 degrees and continue to cool the cabinet down minus 4 degrees from your set point. So if we're at 40 degrees the compressor will run until the temperature inside the cabinet or the temperature at the temp probe reaches around about 36 degrees. At that point the compressor is turned off and the temperature inside the cabinet is allowed to raise to again 40 degrees where the process is then repeated. So you can see the integral part for the refrigeration relay is this is what will tell the compressor to turn on or off. This will act like a light switch. So the control board will send down 24 volts DC to this relay to open the relay to be able to send power to the compressor. And then when the temperature gets to its uh, 4 degrees less its set point, less hypothetically in the situation, 36 degrees, this relay then closes because the control board has removed the 24 volts DC to this relay, which turns the compressor off. So if this begins to fail, there's two states we'll be in. Either the compressor will stay on, and then at that point, all your products inside the machine will begin to freeze because the compressor is never turning off. Even though the control board has removed the 24 volts DC from the relay, it's still stuck open. Or the unit never opens up. So in other words, the control board is sending 24 volts DC down to this, and this is not turning on or opening up. So the compressor never turns on. So this is where this component, again, it's got an on state or an off state. That's it. So if this unit fails, then you can see the issues that we could have. So that's why it'd be very, it's always good to have a few spare of these units. They're very, very cheap. Um, last time I looked, you're probably looking around about $25 to $35 for just one of these. Um, it's kind of expensive for what they are, but in the big scope of things, that's not a lot of money to spend to get your machine up and running and profitable again. So it's important to know where these are. Now, on your AMS machine, refrigerated machine. And again, I'm using this AMS 35 wide combo machine here. And this is a new machine. It doesn't have a problem with refrigeration system in it, but I'm usually have, have this available for this video. Now the refrigeration relay is going to be located on the right hand side of the cabinet. There's going to be another door that we can open up and shows you here. Now where it's going to be located is going to be where the warning sign is behind this panel here. So we're going to need to remove this panel. So again, I've got the door open on the machine. This is the left side of the cabinet. Here's the right side of the cabinet. There is a door that we'll need to open. Matter of fact, there's actually a spring here that, that will pull the door closed. So when we're working, you might want to remove that spring uh, off the latch. You can just lift up, gently relax the string, and this will hold, usually stay open for the most part if the machine is level. And again, we're going to be removing this panel here. So we're going to go ahead and grab my uh, quarter inch nut driver and to be able to remove these screws here uh, to get this panel off to get into that relay. Now here we are looking at the panel that covers up where the refrigeration relay is. Again, this is on the right hand side of the cabinet. I've got the little door open, the spring removed, so the door is staying open. And again, behind this panel. So I'm going to need to remove this panel. Now first, 
I have the machine unplugged from the wall. This is important. We do have power coming into this. If you have the machine plugged in, we have some open lines here. So you will need to remove power from the machine, not turning it off. You need to unplug the power cord from the wall before you remove this panel. Now I've got my quarter inch nut drivers. The majority of these screws here are all gonna be quarter inch. And we only need to remove the top one. The top one is the only thing that's gonna keep in place. The other, uh, was it one, two, three, four, five, six screws here, we need to just loosen because the panel will pop off, but we need to remove the top one. That's the important one. So we'll go ahead and remove that now. And I'm gonna go down here and loosen up the remaining six screws here. And then the ones on the right hand side can get a bit tricky because just the way the angle you have to work it. That's where having the extended uh, shaft on this quarter inch nut driver will help kind of get around this awkwardness. All right, so once I've got those backed up, I'm gonna go ahead and lift up on this panel and off the comes the panel. You know, inside here, is going to be the refrigeration relay. Now that we got this panel removed, we can find the refrigeration relay, which is located right here on these wires. Typically, it's gonna be a brown and yellow wire with two black wires plugging into the relay. Now above here is our 20 volts transformer. So this is dropping our 110. So this right here is where our 110 or 120 is entering the transformer. That's in our line side. Load side here is what's outputting 24 volts uh, for the control board. So if you can locate the transformer, you always look down from the transformer and there's gonna be a refrigeration relay. Now the refrigeration relay is going to be held on again by two quarter inch screws. Now, the way that this machine's set up, it's kind of difficult for me to get this angled right So with the camera. So we'll do the best we can here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the first screw here at the top. That's the one I can see clearly. All right, so I'm just going to gently pull that up, remove that, put that down here. And now that I've got that, I'm going to go to the bottom one, which will be a little bit hard to see on camera. I'm just gonna take the bottom one off here. And I'm just gonna loosen the bottom one because usually you can lift them right off. So that's where we go, that's loose like that. And just kind of pluck it off because we've got these little notches here that uh, the screws will go through to hold them in place. So here we have our actual refrigeration assembly here. Keep it in the frame of the shot. And we've got, again, we've got our 24 volt lines, DC here. So it's always important to remember which wire goes to where. So we got a yellow wire on the right, brown wire on the left. This is DC voltage, so we might make sure we get these wires correct. Not so much on your 120, but just do a wire by wire removal and putting it onto the replacement unit. Now, one word of caution, whenever you are looking to remove these, uh, I always have a needle nose pliers and I will grab the base and I will gently wiggle back and forth to try to disconnect these wires here. So I'm just gonna wiggle this. You don't wanna rip the wires off of the boots when you, when you uh, are gonna be replacing it. So this, you know, have this on hand uh, that makes things a little bit easier to remove these wires. So once you swap the unit out, we can go ahead and put it back into place. Go ahead and latch it onto this bottom piece here. There we go. And then kind of line it up and kind of sighting the screw hole there for the top. I'll go in here and do this while I've got a camera in front of my face. There we go. I'm going to tighten down the top one. And now I'm just going to tighten down the bottom one. And now that's how you can very easily replace that relay. And then you can go so further here as you go in and put your panel back on. Latch that up and put the screw in at the top, right here. So tip, tilt the camera like that. You go ahead and I'll put the screw back in here in the top. That's kind of lock it in place. And then the remainder here, I'll just come through and tighten down the six screws that are on holding the remainder of the panel in. Here is a quick troubleshooting step that you can follow to determine if your refrigeration relay is not functioning as it should. 
When you go to your machine and you notice that your temperatures are below your set point or four degrees less than your set point and you're noticing that all your products are frozen inside your machine, what I'd like for you to do is go ahead and close the door on the machine, keep the machine plugged up, close the door, wait a few seconds, and then notice the sounds that your machine is making, that humming sound like a refrigerator. That's usually an indication that your compressor is on. If you're in a noisy environment, Check the back of the machine, back left, there is your, uh, the exhaust port of your machine. So make sure you have air blowing out the back of the machine. That's gonna let you know that your compressor is on. At that point, once you determine that your compressor is on and you recognize the sound, open the door on the machine. On an AMS machine, when the door is open, the control board will shut the compressor off. If you have the door open and you continue to hear that humming sound like a refrigerator, or again, in a noisy environment, you have the door open and you can still feel air blowing out the back of the exhaust port, this is a clear indication that your compressor is still running when the door is open. That's a clear indicator as well that your refrigeration relay is still stuck in an open state. So the control board has removed the 24 volts DC from the relay, but yet your door is open and the compressor is still running means that relay is stuck open. So you might wanna go ahead and replace that. I see more of them getting stuck open than getting stuck closed. Again, this is where it's kind of important to have a few of these relays on hand, especially if you're operating several AMS machines, refrigeration systems in. Because of the cost for these units, it's fairly, fairly cheap when it comes to the big picture of the revenue that your machine can generate. But if you have those on hand, not only can you use them to replace the defective component, but you can also have them on hand to do A, B testing to make sure that your machine, you are replacing the proper component when you run into this issue. Now, I just wanted to share this because this is a, a common component that does fail on these AMS machines, so I thought it's important to know how to remove and replace these refrigeration relays. Now, if you found this video useful, I appreciate it if you could like and subscribe, and make sure you hit the notification bell below to be notified next time I upload a video. As well, be sure to check the description below for any affiliate links I might have. It will help you support the channel at no extra cost to you. Until then, I'll see you on the next video. Take care.